part of me thinks I should kind of give you some advance warning about this because it does get a little bit weird, but the reality is it's not actually that difficult of an idea. It just starts doing things that we're not familiar with and it just feels difficult. So try and stick with me. And we're gonna think of this in terms of big numbers. So when I talk about the mole, right away you probably already have a couple things imagined and I can guarantee you the things you're imagining, well I shouldn't say guarantee, but I'm pretty sure the things that you're imagining when you hear, see the word mole is not at all what we're talking about. And this is not a mole, this is the, the, the gentleman that, whose work we can uh, point to for this understanding of the mole. Do we need to know about him? No, not really. Now, what I need you to, to understand, and this is something that you are familiar with, is when we start talking about really, really large numbers, we start to flip from using the actual numbers written down, and we use words to describe them. So instead of writing all the zeros, I would just say a billion. And then we can do fractions of those things. So I can have 12.3 million, I could have 8.7 billion, and those numbers that we toss around sometimes feel very familiar to us. Here's the thing, we're gonna do that. So if we look at a chemical formula, and if you need to pause this and do the count, that's not an ideal time to do it because I need you to understand that there are 13 atoms in that particle. If I have several of those particles, I will have that many times 13 atoms. So for example, I pick three particles, that would give me a total of 13. 39 atoms. If I were to keep doing that and I were to start to say, well, what if I had one dozen of those particles, I could count all the particles or all the atoms in terms of dozen, right? Yes, I could come up with whatever that number actually is, but it's just as convenient, in fact, more convenient for me to say 13 dozen because one had 13 atoms, so one dozen has 13 dozen. And if I had a million of them, well then, if every one, each one of them has 13, then a million of them would have 13 million. And I could write out all the zeros, but I'm gonna leave it as the name. Three million, like before, would be 39 million because there's three times 13. And if I had a bazillion of them, well, exactly the same pattern exists. Now I've been picking one bazillion and three bazillion or one dozen and three dozen, but the point is it's exactly the same thing. Mole is just a big number. So it's a large number that we use exclusively in chemistry to count very, very large numbers of very, very small things. And the only use of it is in chemistry, which is one of the reasons why people think it's difficult is because it's a new word for a new number. Well, what was the actual number? Two things, number one, this, number two, it doesn't matter. We are never going to use the number 6.022 times 10 to the 23. We're going to count it as a mole. Okay? If you want to do the math piece of it and say come up with an actual number or a word for that number other than the specific number, but it would be 6.022 sextillion. Not something that we use all the, that often. Okay, how do I use it? I use it exactly the same way as I do million, bazillion. If I had a mole of iron atoms, I would have that many iron atoms, but I'm never gonna count them as 6.022. I'm gonna count them as one mole, but that's what one mole is. If I had a mole of molecules, well, then I'm gonna count those molecules in terms of that, and I could, I won't, but I could count them as 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And within there, there's that many atoms, but we don't really care that much about that, and again, I'm never gonna use the 6.022 times 10 to the 23. But it does get a little bit weird when one mole of molecules contains three moles of atoms. But think about it, it should make sense. And then three moles of water, but again, I'm never gonna use that number. I want you to think about this in terms of big numbers and, and where we use the big number as the counting tool, even if it means we've had to round off a little bit. That becomes our thing. So we're gonna put in these groups of atoms and molecules. Now we are gonna need a way to convert from what I can count and measure into this weird number that I can't or won't count uh, or use as that number, but then count it as this bucket full of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna show you this. I'm not gonna do the, well, I guess if you need to think fast, you can. Hopefully, you said 
four dozen, right? If you were asked to count that, you would have grouped those eggs into this rather weird number, 12, put them in a group of 12, call that one dozen, another group of 12 is another one. We're actually doing a very similar thing. We're taking a whole big weird number of, of atoms or molecules and calling them a new one, okay? Just like dozen. Okay, how do we count with moles? We're gonna use the molar mass because we're never gonna be able to count all those different atoms. So we cannot count them up like we could count eggs. We're gonna put them on a balance and we're gonna find the mass. But the mass, the molar mass, is the mass of one mole of substance. And then we'll call it units of grams per mole. And by the way, that is the proper short form for mole is M-O-L. Don't shorten it any more than that, even if you think you could do a more short job. Um, and then we use the mass numbers from the periodic table. So the periodic table is gonna be a huge help to us because now those numbers at the bottom of the uh, box uh, represent the mass of one mole, not just the mass of one atom. So if I were to find iron on the periodic table, it has a number of 55.845. That is the mass of one atom, if I was measuring that, or it's the mass of one mole of atoms, that's the molar mass. Same thing with potassium. If I were to look at the periodic table, I would find that it's got a 39.8, uh, sorry, 39.0983. That is the molar mass, or the grams per mole, or the mass of one mole of potassium atoms. And that totally works if I'm talking about molecules as well. I just put them all together and add them all up. And I don't know why things are coming in in this order, but if I look at the uh, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and I look at how many atoms I have of each, I just add them all up. And the same thing would be true with any molecule of any size. I just look at the periodic table, find the numbers of the periodic table, that gives me my molar mass. Now, it's entirely likely that... What is going on? Oh, there you are, there you go. It's entirely likely that you won't just be using a single mole of something, but you'll be using more than one mole or less than one mole. At which point, if every mole it has a mass of, in this top case, 32 grams per mole, and I got two and a half of those, I'd multiply them together. The number of moles I have times the mass of each mole. Same thing if I've got less than a mole, number of moles I have times the molar mass of each mole. And then the same is true if I have less, or if I'm trying to figure out how many moles that I have. So this formula is going to be kind of important, although we're going to put it together a little bit later. So if you don't write this one down, you will get it later. Okay, if I know the mass of something and I don't know the number of moles that I have, I'm gonna use the molar mass again. Number of moles would be the total mass divided by the mass of each one. So total mass in the case of, of this one is 35.7 grams. Each mole has a mass of 120.3, which I found using the molar mass, and the numbers in the periodic table, 0 0.31 moles. Too easy. Okay. If I get a little stuck on that, I think about this in terms of eggs, and I'm not gonna read through this example for two reasons. Number one, I want you, if you are stuck, you can look through it and hopefully it'll make some sense. But the other thing is, I know that we don't sell eggs that way, but the math works. Take the total number of the, that I have, the total amount of money that I need to spend, and the uh, cost of each dozen, and that would tell me how many dozen I could get. And I know nobody's gonna sell you eggs like that. That's okay, okay? So there's the other form. If I'm trying to find the number of moles, is the mass divided by the molar mass. This triangle I really like. If you've never seen the triangles like this before, I'll show you how to use it some other time. But this is a summary of the previous two formulas. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. Mass is number of moles times the uh, molar mass. Uh, I'm gonna get you some practice. You can pause this, write these ones down. You're gonna get some more practice in class. At this point though, we should be able to calculate a molar mass. We should be able to use the molar mass to calculate a number of moles if I'm given a mass and a chemical formula. And uh, the other one where I calculate number of moles given a mass and I think I already said that. Find the things I'm looking for. Anyway, talk to you in class.